Hello, good morning everyone. Today we are going to talk about general consideration of newborns. Okay. Now what's important important in this in this uh, topic is uh, like uh, what we do when the baby is born and uh, uh, like a normal baby is born in which like there is no need of any special care. Okay. Uh, first of all, we are going to discuss this thing and once you know We will finish discussing this thing then we will talk about um, What we do in the babies when they need some sort of special care Okay, uh, like as you know all these things we have already discussed, okay, so Of course like uh, We are not going to discuss this thing uh, again okay so first of all our our aim is to like uh, the routine neonatal care you can say and uh, after this routine neonatal care we will go for neonatal resuscitation when the babies they have some problem <clears throat> once they are born then what what are the things we can do here like you can see the difference between a premature baby as well as the full term baby okay yeah in the picture form so uh, let's uh, <clears throat> I will talk about this thing um, Actually, you know the slide what's what I'm saying, you know, they don't have any uh, uh, You can say connection with the slides which I am scrolling down because uh, uh, This is just the PPT, you know, I am scrolling down in this one uh, so anyhow uh, to start with, you know, you must understand what are the changes you can say um, Which are there when the babies are born, okay, uh, that's a very important thing uh, because uh, <clears throat> uh, In the fetal life, you know the lungs they are filled with fluid or amniotic fluids and the oxygen is They are getting by placenta as you know and uh, uh, basically the blood supply, you know, the blood vessels that supply and drain the lungs are uh, constricted, okay? When when the bloods, uh, blood vessels uh, which supply the blood vessels, you know, uh, which supply uh, the lungs, they are constricted, okay? Uh, what it means like when when these blood vessels are constricted so what it means uh, they they are high uh, what you can say or vascular they, they have high resistance or low resistance of course like they have high resistance okay so of course like the blood not much blood is supplied to this uh, lung vessels okay so most of the lung most of the blood you know it bypasses from the right heart to the left heart by the mean of like the same thing which I show you last in the last lecture if you don't know uh, see the last part of the last lecture by the means of you know patent uh, sorry ductus arteriosus as well as uh, that opening between the two atrias okay foramen ovale so uh, now the important thing to hear uh, to know here is you know like once the labor is started and the baby it started coming down. I'm talking about the normal vaginal delivery guys by the way so what happened that uh, When the when the baby is passing through the tight birth canal or vaginal canal There is Too much pressure on their uh, chest, okay, or this pressure basically uh, help in one of the way is that due to this squeezing pressure uh, the water which is inside the lung or the amniotic fluid which is inside the lung uh, is going to uh, drain away okay um, so that that's a very important point you can say uh, uh, to remember that you know in normal vaginal delivery there is less chances of lung complications because when the baby is passing through the birth canal you know there is squeezing pressure on the chest of the baby and due to that squeezing pressure on the chest of the baby what happens is a lot of fluid it is absorbed drained 
and uh, if you have seen that you know when the babies are born what they do either they stroke the feet or either they tap the back so basically what they are giving like either either they are giving uh, tactile stimulus okay uh, basically the babies they need this tactile or thermal like change of temperature or um, there is a increases in catecholamine secretion so they, they need this kind of stimulus to initiate breathing okay and on an average you know the first breath occurs within the six sec six seconds you can say okay now one thing guys which is very important to understand here when the babies they start breathing what happens is you know the, the fluid which is inside the lungs it is going to absorb by the lymphatics okay so a lot of fluid is going to absorb uh, squeeze like because of the squeezing pressure it is going to drain away from the lungs and the rest when the babies they start breathing it is taken by the lymphatic system and simply the lungs are expanded the lungs get expanded okay once the baby is born and they, they started breathing so once you know this lungs get expanded okay at birth with the rise in oxygen tension uh, in the body because now they are getting the first hand oxygen by their own lungs before they were dependent on the oxygen from the mother uh, what is going to happen is that uh, there will be fall in fall in the pulmonary vascular resistance okay before they were high resistance but now there is a a fall in the pulmonary vascular resistance okay and simply because of this the blood which was bypassing before now started going towards the lungs okay and now uh, the blood flow to the lungs will be increased and because the uh, increased amount of blood is going to pass through the lungs uh, what happen is there is increased uh, left atrial filling pressure before it was not there why because the blood was bypassed there was no circulation in the pulmonary arteries as, as, as well as in the pulmonary veins okay so what it lead to closure of fora men ovale okay so this is one of the very important thing guys and <clears throat> when there is flow of oxygenated blood through the ductus arteriosus okay what happens like the ductus arteriosus become closed so simply the other change is what ductus arteriosus get closed guys if this ductus arteriosus is not closed will, uh, will not close after birth and it will remain patent we call this condition as patent ductus arteriosus okay of course we are going to discuss that when we are going to discuss cardiology okay now what happens uh, that uh, th these are the changes you know few of the changes you can say uh, which which occur by the way one of the thing you know for example if if there is some amount of fluid which is present which will stay in the lungs you know uh, after birth what babies do like they, they had increased <laughs> amount of breathing the rate of the breathing is increased we call it as transient tachypnea of the newborn okay it is called as transient tachypnea because you know it is like for a short time of duration they breathe fast and then it goes away and of course like uh, whatever i'm talking about i'm talking about the normal things for example some of the infants they don't breathe right after birth so what we uh, do is we need some special type of resuscitation which will which is our next topic okay which is coming soon like of course after this topic we are going to discuss that so this is important uh some of the babies you know they they like after when they are born they show like apneic episodes like apnea means what absence of respiration or sometimes they have uh, you can say uh, some short episodes of apnea okay uh, so of course like nowadays the good thing is uh, 
um, they are all monitoring these things okay and that's a good thing uh, like as soon as the baby is born you know they keep on monitoring uh, what what's going on in the baby okay and they see like if the baby need any resuscitation or they don't need any resuscitation so in in the previous lecture i told you i show you the normal fetal circulation and i told you that you know once the baby is born uh, so there are some changes which much must occur in the babies okay uh, which should change you can say uh, closure of foramen whale as well as the closure of ductus arteriosus these changes should be there okay and then of course the babies they will, they will start breeding okay guys here i want to show you one thing which is very important very 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 important okay i, I will I, uh, I, I will show you that thing later why because uh, there is there's a point i want to establish before that okay now basically okay all these things are written over here but i will i'm i will i'm going to add one more slide here um, just to uh, talk about few of the things i uh, see uh, when some baby is born and you know like uh, uh, how uh, we know that the baby is like normal uh, is is dependent on an Apgar score okay and what is Apgar score of course uh, we are going to discuss this thing uh, in coming lecture okay so when the babies are normal we do provide them with something called as routine neonatal care I am really sorry for this disturbance okay so what is routine neonatal care simply all the babies uh, who are born normal who start breathing on their own um, they simply uh, their Apgar score is good okay what I'm saying is Apgar score like which is going to be our next topic okay Apgar score is good so they don't need any special care so what we provide them is routine neonatal care so what is a routine neonatal care you know in the hospitals what they do uh, as soon as the babies are born uh, like nowadays you know a pediatrician is always there to take care of the baby and a pediatrician are they come they receive the baby uh, uh, they examine the baby right after birth and they provide the routine neonatal care uh, for example uh, like uh, once the baby is born, you know, what they do is like, first of all, is they dry the baby. Okay. Because if they will not dry the baby, uh, they are going to lose a lot of heat. Uh, and they are too, they are newcomers. So like they, they, like they can go into hypothermia simply, right? So, one of the thing guys which you which I uh, one of the thing which I wanted to tell you is that especially uh, the room temperature should be the optimum uh, room temperature like 25 degrees centigrade or little uh, warmer towards warm okay uh, so that when the babies are born you know they must get what you can say uh, see what's the normal temperature of the human body it's around 37 degrees centigrade but the normal room temperature is taken as 25 degrees centigrade right so the baby is coming from much warmer environment to the real world. So uh, simply, the, if the room temperature is either 25 or either warmer than that, so that's good for the baby. So simply what they do is like they, they, they dry up the baby, okay? And uh, uh, I, I can show you one of the thing uh, here. Uh, like... Uh, yes wait i will put the same photograph over here so see uh, this is a very nice photograph you can say uh, see dry the baby remove any wet towels and cover start the clock or note the time so basically uh, why we note the time is uh, on average the babies they take the, their first breath within six seconds okay so see, from birth to 60 sec 30 seconds, uh, they are checking the tone, breathing, and heart rate. So basically what they're checking is like the Apgar score, which I will talk in a while, okay? So if the baby is not breathing, then we have to start something. But right now what we are uh, talking 
is the normal babies, right? So that's why uh, I'm 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 not going to uh, uh, I'm going to discuss the routine uh, care which 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 is provided to the baby. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, simply uh, the important thing here is like first of all they dry the baby. Uh, second thing, okay, of course, like they dry the baby after the baby they started taking breath okay and as soon as you know the babies they uh, they start taking the breath you know what they do they clamp the uh, oblicus okay ja after making sure that the baby is breathing because if you will clamp the oblicus uh, without making sure that the baby is started breathing of course the baby will be they can die many of the hospitals they they provide or they apply erythromycin ointment it's not so important uh, because you know the efficacy of this thing is also questionable you can say uh, why they apply the erythromycin ointment to the eyes uh, uh, why just to uh, avoid a condition called as ophthalmia uh, neonatron okay so not all the hospitals, some of the care centers, you know, did they apply this thing. One thing which we provide to the newborn is vitamin K injection, okay. And basically we give them IM injection. Why? Because uh, uh, the babies, their liver is not that much matured, like they can uh, make much clotic factors, okay. So when we provide them with vitamin K injection, basically it protects them against uh, uh, hemolytic disease of newborn hemolytic disease of newborn hemolytic disease of newborn but um, again this disease we will discuss when we will discuss the hematology section in pediatrics okay one very important thing which we which is done in the babies you know as a new care of a normal baby is they uh, do something called as heal prick test why it is called as heel prick test because they they withdraw the blood from the heel of the baby okay so why because they they withdraw the blood from the heel of the baby to conduct some blood test okay and they uh, screen the babies against certain conditions for example um, uh, metabolic disorders okay they screen the babies against metabolic disorders like uh, um, amino acid disorders are there, fatty acid disorders are there, galactosemia is there. Again, like there are, there can be, you can say, uh, congenital metabolic disorders in the babies may have. Okay, it can diagnose many of the blood disorders like hemoglobinopathies okay uh, endocrinal disorders like uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia whatever names I am taking in the coming days we are going to test that uh, they can measure the um, thyroid levels okay because hypothyroidism can occur in the babies and hypothyroidism if it is there, it can cause developmental abnormalities or neurological developmental abnormalities in babies, right? Cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis. Um, very, very common in white people, okay? Uh, not present in everyone. So, simply, what, what, what is given here is... Uh, why they do heel prick test to take the blood and you know what why it is important because you know they can screen many conditions in the babies right after birth okay of course the test result doesn't come on the same day but uh, they take the blood and then, then they check and later on you can you can get the uh, like the family can get the blood results okay so uh, this is what is done uh, one of the very important thing guys like if the mother is r h negative okay uh, then we also run a test called as indirect anti-globulin test or comb test okay 
direct NT global in test okay because uh, the important thing is uh, we must give the mother uh, NT uh, D injection okay or RSD injection yeah, if the mother is hepatitis B positive the, if the mother is hep, hepatitis B positive then of course uh, we can start the baby with the uh, hepatitis B immunoglobulins okay uh, plus uh, we provide the baby with hepatitis B uh, hepatitis B uh, vaccination okay so uh, this is a very important thing you know by this way of course we can we can we can protect the baby against many conditions okay so see dry the baby uh, clamp them like us erythromycin ointment vitamin k injection heel pretest is given rh negative status mother should be given anti rh gam hepatitis b positive uh, babies uh, mothers babies should be given hepatitis b immunoglobulins as well as hepatitis b vaccination okay so this is this is the routine care guys nothing important okay and then of course like what this do is like uh, uh, <clears throat> they don't start the feeding right away but uh, they, they if it's a primary gravidus of course like uh, sometimes you know it's like there is no enough blood on the on the uh, first day of or first hour but they still like uh, tell the mother like to feed the baby like within 15 minutes to half an hour and or like they we can give the baby first feed as a bottle feed by um, giving them some what you can say uh, formula milk right so uh, that's important uh, so like uh, these things of course we will discuss when we will discuss resuscitation okay so vaccinations are given okay uh, before like uh, of course like ending this topic what I will do is uh, uh, neonatal examination okay routine neonatal examination so uh, it's a very important thing guys very important point uh, many of the exams you know they ask you uh, to do to perform uh, neonatal examination okay uh, what what is neonatal, uh, neonatal examination of course uh, whenever the babies are born you know uh, what the pediatrician do is like they uh, first of all you know the first thing uh, they, they take the birth weight okay like right after birth after drying up the baby making sure that the baby is not breathing well the baby color is fine it's pink the heart rate of the baby is fine uh, they weigh the baby okay they, they 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 note down the birth weight okay and uh, like they, they always put a tag like this you know in the feet on which like the baby name or and the mother name is written you know so the, that the baby uh, should not be exchanged you can say in in the areas where you can say uh, there is a lot of labors going on together in one big hall or big one big room uh, but of course like if it's a single room uh, for like sometimes you know after the birth of the baby needs some special care so they they take the baby into the in the incubator or in for example neonatal icu neonatal intensive care unit okay so of course in that case they have to take the baby uh, away from the mother uh, by the way like every country have its own practice for example uh, in china i have seen what they do uh, they put like uh, ink on the feet and they take a footprint on the paper okay they take the footprint on the paper and they write the mother name on that paper so simply uh, just to make sure like the mother should have their own baby okay so then of course like generally the the examination is like the same routine which I always say like first of all the general appearance okay so they, they generally uh, check the how the baby looks like okay and, uh, like uh, of course like in, in general appearance uh, the first thing you can notice is either there is any dysmorphic features for example for Down syndrome, achondroplasia 
like different syndromes when you're going to study you would know that they have a typical look so dysmorphic features you can see if the baby is having any dysmorphic features or not so once you have noticed that of course uh, in general appearance you will see like either the baby uh, what is the general posture of the baby either like his feet his arms like they are normal uh, then you will see like either the color of the baby is normal if there is any central cyanosis or as well as peripheral cyanosis okay and uh, uh, how the baby is moving actively moving or what how is the baby cry either he is crying fine or his cry is very weak feeble all these things are connected you know to the baby uh, general health simply so uh, now the the uh, demographics or you can say the measurements you can take in the start or you can take in the end if you decided to take in the start two more things which they measure is uh, uh, the head circumference as well as the length of the baby okay <coughs> and once they have done this thing then again how you do the examination you take the vitals right you check the temperature you check the pulse you check the respiratory rate you check the oxygen saturation that's it you have to check document then you start from the hand and goes up now in the hands what 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 can be seen see it's a newborn baby so in the hand you know they they, they check for example uh, oh fingers should be five they should be separated there should be no sync tactile or extra fingers they see the palmar creases because, for example, in Down syndrome, uh, one of the features is, you know, they have a single palmar crease. So that thing can be noticed. Then they can check, you know, the upper limb tone, if there is any increase or decrease in tone because of many uh, neurological or, you can say, uh, brain disorders, you know. Uh, they can check this thing and then they go on onto the head. In the head, check the fontanelle, you know, like there are two anterior and posterior one, okay? Because the sutures, uh, they are not closed, you know, uh, at the time of birth. So there is anterior and the posterior one. And uh, they, they check that, okay? Uh, of course, like if there is an increase in intracranial pressure, you know, they can be bulging, okay? Uh, then they check the face the face you know the most important thing is the eyes they check the eyes and one thing which they should check in the eyes is called as a red reflex okay when by holding up thermoscope you throw light on the eye the light goes and strike to the retina which is red and reflects back on the eye which appears red so having red reflex is normal if someone don't have the red reflex, so that means it's abnormal. It could be due to cataracts, you know. Uh, why cataracts? It could be any type of congenital abnormality like torch infections or it could be other metabolic disorders. Or for example, it could be a tumor inside the eye which is very common in, in newborns like called as retinoblastoma. Okay. So, uh, this red reflex can be che checked in the eyes. As uh, after that you will check the nose you will check like either air is coming from both of the nostrils which is again very important because sometime some of the babies have something called as coanal atresia and uh, when like the mothers they try to feed them because during feeding they cannot breathe by mouth so their nose is blocked so they turn blue so that is a very important thing we check their mouth for any cleft palate for any high arched palate okay and again why this thing is important because uh, high arched palate you know can point towards different syndromes cleft palate is a defect which can be complete like the lip is also involved which can be just inside so that's what's very important to lick inside Check the ears, do a hearing test. Nowadays, there is special machine, like sophisticated gadgets are there to check for the hearing test. 
Uh, most of the hearing tests, you know, is done, by the way, before discharging the baby from the hospital, like on the f second day of life or third day of life, okay? So, uh, depending on when the babies are discharged. So, see, we are still on the face. Look for any features of uh, Down syndrome, like low set ears, flat occiput, and all this stuff, okay? Like as generally on the face. And uh, th that's what they do. Uh, check, f uh, check for any uh, paleness, okay? Check especially tongue for cyanosis, which is evident on the tip of the tongue or lobes of the ear. Then go on the neck, examine the neck, then go onto the chest and check, you know, either the chest is, uh, you can say, uh, expanding bilaterally equally or not. If it expanding bilaterally equally, so it means air entry is good in both of the lungs. There can be many of the problems like diaphragmatic hernia can be there, which can lead to abnormality in the chest movement. As I told you in the start of the lecture that, you know, in the start of my lectures, like the babies, the newborn babies, their heart rate is between 110 to 160. On the first day of life, you must, when you measure, keep in mind the normal values and also by the help of the steth, you can auscultate the lungs as well as auscultate the heart. Check is S1 and S2 are there and if there is any abnormal sound is there or not. Check the lung fields for the sound. Either the baby is having any kind of abnormal sounds in the chest. Okay. Later on, we go for... Um, uh, abdomen so abdomen like you know simply of course like the umbilicus stump should be there and the abdomen should be soft and uh, of course like it's very hard to palpate any of the organs because the babies are very small so liver kidneys and spleen yes of course if you by palpation if you found any mass in the in the abdomen so then think about what the, that mass can be. For example, uh, nephroblastoma or like uh, renal tumors are very common in newborns. As well as neuroblastomas can also occur. So examine them. Then of course, uh, by the permission of the mother and the, or like the guardian, you know, check the genitals. If it's a boy, Check like both the testes should be the scrotum if the baby is born at the right age. Okay. Um, as well as uh, um, check for anal patency. Like the anal patency, like the anal should not be closed. It should be open. And then in the lower limbs, you know, check the tone. That's it. Check the tone, check any rashes, check any birthmark if the baby have or don't have. Then just... Okay, and in like when you are checking the genitals, guys at the hip joint, you know what? Remember, very important test. One is called as Barlow's test. One is called as Ortolani test. Okay. Uh, I will write down here. Barlow as well as Ortolani or Ort Ortolani. Okay, now uh, what is these tests, guys? You know, these are tests which are done uh, to check for developmental dysplasia of hip joint DDH. Okay, and what is this basically? Um, this is these are maneuvers and can be easily done. You know, uh, what they do is uh, like this Barlow and Otlani is given on the names of the guys who basically describe them. So Barlow maneuver simply uh, like an Otlani or is to check for developmental dysplasia of hip joint. And it is very easy that, you know, uh, like uh, we have to uh, like Otlani uh, test is like uh, when we, uh, what you can say, uh, have to dislocate the hip joint, okay? 
orthogonal test is to like is to dislocate the hip joint. So what we do in orthogonal test is uh, uh, we basically uh, grip. By the way, it's better to see the video. But uh, like what we do is uh, we flex the uh, f uh, lower limb at knee joint and we hold the baby f uh, thigh as well as uh, all the leg you know in both hands and what we do is like we give a pressure uh, to like downwards okay if you can see this picture so what we do we bring both of the knees towards the midline okay by holding it in our hands and then we come like put us very small amount of pressure like towards the bed in order to dislocate the hip joint so what happens is like we feel a very soft click or we, we feel the click or we we can hear the click which means that the that the femur head is dislocated from the acetabulum okay and then the other maneuver or planning we do just to uh, relocate it back okay we we bring the uh, lower limb in the same position how the baby is here okay but by one of the finger we like push the head of the femur back upwards okay like when you will see a video on YouTube of Orthlani and Barlow maneuver, you would understand like what, what I'm, I mean to say because I think it's better to see the video uh, to understand this test better. Okay. Mm, I think I have the videos here in computer as well, but I don't want to play it here. Uh, they, they will be recorded anyways, but uh, you are watching this lecture on YouTube, so it's okay to write Barlow and Orthlani maneuver and, you know, uh, see the video all together. Very helpful. Okay. So we can do this maneuver guys just to see either uh, there is any uh, developmental dysplasia of hip joint okay because you know if that can is if that is managed like at an early stage you know that's a very good thing so guys uh, at this point you know uh, you can uh, take the baby in your hand and like uh, just look at the back of the baby all his back all his vertebra uh, just to see if there is any um, uh, disorders on the back side like you know neural tube defects meningocele or men meningomyloseal things like this okay um, like uh, this thing uh, when you're checking uh, the mouth of the baby you can do one reflex like you can touch on the side of the mouth and the baby is going to move the uh, head or mouth on that side uh, if you know what I mean to say is you know uh, rooting reflex you, you can put, the doctor can put the finger in the baby mouth or anything, you know, and the babies, they start sucking, sucking reflex, uh, as well as you can do Moro reflex, okay? Uh, like, so, I, I, I told you a lot of reflexes, but, you know, uh, rooting, uh, sucking, uh, Moro, uh, you know, these reflexes are very commonly performed, okay? So... Uh, you can again see the videos of this one just to know like how 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 these tests are performed So simply okay in the lower limbs you can just check the muscle toe that's it uh, This is the examination of the baby. So simply uh, by general appearance Then we check the vitals then we start from the hands go on to the face Then come all the way down when we are at the hip joint you can perform Ortolani and Barlow test you can check the genitals, you can check the anal region, then you can pick the baby in your hands and see on the back for any spinal cord, like uh, any type of neural tube defects, as well as you can perform these reflexes, okay? These reflexes should be present at the time of birth, but later on this must uh, go away. So simply, uh, after this, you know what they do? Like they document all the things on a paper, uh, what is the result of the examination? What is the, uh, you can say, the birth weight? What is the gestational age? What is the head circumference? What is the length of the baby? What is the result of the reflexes? Either there is any presence of any birthmark or not. Okay. So, of course, most of the babies who are normal, they don't need any special care. And simply, 
they can be you can say uh, sent back to the mother for feeding okay so that's how you can say a normal newborn baby is taken care and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about uh, what is neonatal resuscitation okay so thank you so much guys for listening